esteemed speakers, guests, and to each of you present here, a very good morning. My name is Ugin Choden, as Choning mentioned, and uh, this session covers stories of 50 years of UNDP in Bhutan. Last week, as Choning mentioned, marked a very historical event in Bhutan's journey towards development. It was the 50th anniversary of uh, 50 years of the United Nations Development Program in Bhutan, UNDP. With that said, I welcome you to this session. And uh, as Choning mentioned, it was as a result of uh, His Majesty, the third king of Bhutan, his, uh, he spearheaded development in Bhutan. And uh, as Choning mentioned, it was in 1971 in September that uh, Bhutan first joined the United Nations. And the partnership between UNDP and Bhutan actually started in 1973. So, uh, it's a very historical and special moment, and I'm sure, as with, <clears throat> as with most of uh, our audience here today, uh, most probably the, the older generation, we grew up hearing stories through our parents and elders in the family, and I too uh, grew up listening to stories about my father, about his early days in Bhutan, and to think that you know, it was such a medieval time. Uh, they grew up uh, with no roads, no motorable roads, no electricity. I'm sure most of the young people here can't, uh, uh, haven't reflected back to think that in such a short span of time, uh, Bhutan has seen so much changes. It has been, Bhutan has witnessed rapid transformation from this medieval sort of state to what we are today. And I still remember uh, my mother recalling how it took them like almost a week to walk to uh, Finseling just to travel to the border town. It took them a week and uh, I remember her saying that it took um, it took her, their first night halt was in Kastapchu where, you know, we can just jump into your cars and it takes you barely 20 to 30 minutes to get to Kastapchu now. So this, this tremendous uh, leap from uh, Bhutan in the early days of my father's youth to where we are currently, I think it is a remarkable achievement. And I think this is hugely due to, I believe, in the partnership between UNDP and the Royal Government of Bhutan to see such rapid uh, transformation for Bhutan. And uh, with that, I would like to invite Mr. Yunus, Mr. Mahmoud Yunus. Uh, thank you for your time for being with us here today. And uh, I would like to ask you, you know, it's, you're reaching almost uh, close to a year of being here in uh, Bhutan. So how has your experiences been? I would r really like to hear about like uh, your personal and professional experiences since you've been here. Well, um, thank you very much. Thanks, Ugen. And um, good morning in Kuzu Zampula. Uh, what an honor uh, to be with you all today. And for a change, we are not talking any technical topic, but rather uh, stories uh, of Bhutan and UNDP. Uh, and, and, and that is such an honor uh, for me to, uh, to share, uh, you know, some of our shared work uh, today. Um, I think you started with a question of my personal, um, you know, completing nine months, my personal experience as a professional. If I start with personal, I will need a few hours. <laughs> but, um, you know, there's uh, Bhutan and UNDP stories intertwined in development. But there's a little bit of intertwine of my personal story with Bhutan as well. First of all, I was born in the year that Bhutan joined the United Nations. So we share a milestone there, which is my birth year. <laughs> and Bhutan join, joining the, 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 the United Nations. The second was, it must have been 1980s, probably 19, uh, when um, I was a young refugee at the time. Uh, and it was the SARC uh, summit. Uh, I don't remember where it was. And I was somewhere, uh, there was a small TV, uh, I think it was 14 inch. Um, if some of you remember, uh, the young generation would not remember. It, it was like Toshiba 14 inch, which was a luxury to be. And I saw this um, summit there, and there was one person in very beautiful, unique um, outfit. And that was the, the Bhutanese outfit, and that was His Majesty. 
Uh, and that attracted my attention. Uh, so um, fast forward in uh, 19, uh, sorry, in 2010, I wrote a small paper, someone asked, and then I did a comparison, and that was the Bhutan transition to democracy. And that's where I really um, appreciated the journey and uh, the, 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 the wisdom, the, the vision of His Majesty. Um, and there was a com comparison between two countries, the transition, and Bhutan transition to democracy so smoothly. And if I may borrow um, a quote from Her Royal Highness when I was discussing with, with her this transition, and, and she said basically, the work that has gone uh, before uh, 2008. So the transition to democracy was as you take fish to the water. And that was such a powerful uh, way to, to explain the, this, this um, uh, you know, um, uh, transition to, uh, uh, to democracy. So that paper actually gave me an opportunity to um, you know, dig deeper into uh, Bhutan, the, the, the history, the culture, uh, the wisdom of the, 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 the monarchy. Um, and then, um, 2016, um, I moved to, to Bangkok with UNDP regional office there, and I was the head of the South and West Asia uh, cluster, and that's when I was directly engaging with, with Bhutan. And then I wanted to visit Bhutan, uh, and my uh, predecessor, uh, Azusa Kabuta, some of you probably know her, uh, she was inviting me to come, and I said, this is the only ca country in my um, sub-region that I haven't been to, then comes COVID. So it deprived me from that, uh, that, that ability to visit beautiful Bhutan. Little did I know that I will be um, honored and lucky uh, enough to be stationed here. Um, so if, 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 if I may, um, I just want to share one, because uh, all of you take it for granted. Um, actually, arrival in Bhutan uh, was quite, a, quite an experience, right? Um, those who take it for granted, which most of you, <laughs> next time if you fly uh, into Paro and you're landing there, just pay attention. It is unique, right? I have been around uh, 70, 71 countries, uh, you know, around the world. But that is a very unique experience that actually, to me, explains the essence of Bhutan. So, first of all, when the plane comes, there's a beautiful music. And the plane is moving in this valley, and you could see houses there, people, you know, hanging the laundry there, uh, you know, some people working some cars. And, and if you look at the music in the, in the plane, it moves as the plane is dancing in this valley, uh, you know, just, just, just moving there. And then you see that the plane all of a sudden, you know, touches the ground, and there are cars, there are houses, and this runway you know, just kind of transition into these green mountains there. You don't see that there is all. So, and to me, you look at that, it's like a, the, the example of coexistence that Bhutan presents. You know, it's even the plain, even the runway, transition to road, to mountains, to greenery. Uh, and that is unique. Uh, next time when you land in, 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 in Paru, just pay attention to that. And look at this music, you look at the dance that the... And that's the essence of coexistence. So you have the mountains, the runway, the roads, the houses, the trees, the greenery, the plain. Uh, you know, they all kind of don't disturb each other. They, they, they just like support each other. So that was a very, very unique um, experience. And obviously, um, uh, you know, the, the, the hospitality that touched my, my heart to my uh, visits to the field, going to meeting with the farmers, with the, with the villagers, with the local authorities. Uh, it truly is, is unique. Professionally, I couldn't, I couldn't ask for, um, uh, for better time. You know, we are coming, uh, we just celebrate our 50th uh, anniversary, as you mentioned. Uh, Bhutan is graduating from the LDC status uh, later this year, thanks to the, to the vision uh, of, of, of uh, Bhutan, uh, from, um, you know, His Majesty all the way to the, to the, to the government, uh, to take that, that step. Uh, we are engaged now in post-LDC uh, graduation um, uh, development plan, the, the 13 five-year plan. I have a wonderful team. I couldn't ask for, for a better team. Uh, so professionally, um, it couldn't be more fulfilling and rewarding. Thank for you. me, uh, you know, even half a century seems like a really long uh, time 
period of time. And I'm sure given the 50 years, you must have a lot of uh, successful stories to share about, you know, very impactful projects yeah. here. So I would be very interested. I'm sure the audience would like to learn about some of the projects that has created quite an impact while working yeah. with the government of Bhutan. Yeah. Um, well, as I, as I said, actually, um, you know, UNDP is honored to have been part of Bhutan um, uh, development story. You know, our story is, is, is uh, intertwined. Um, in 1971, that's when Bhutan joined the United Nations. Um, less than 24 months later, uh, UNDP established its, its, its presence here. The basic uh, legal agreement was signed. Uh, in UNDP presence here, the programmatic presence in 1973 was actually representing um, uh, the UN system here. Right? This was the first multilateral agency that came. And if I um, quote, uh, you know, uh, uh, the Honorable Foreign Minister uh, in our reception, we said that UNDP eased and opened uh, the way for, for, for the rest of the UN to come into, into Bhutan. That is, uh, that's absolutely uh, true. Um, and then in 1979, uh, was when uh, UNDP office uh, construction started and then it was um, uh, inaugurated a year, a year later when the administrator visited here and uh, His Majesty was there with, with a lot of uh, other dignitaries. Um, in that office was, uh, I believe today, used as the, the, the police headquarters because we moved to, to a new uh, facility. Uh, and my driver, Norbo, was telling me that stone is still there and I, and I had to go and visit that foundation um, uh, stone. And, and throughout this, these years, there were uh, a few things which, um, you know, when we were uh, preparing for our 50th anniversary, we dug into the, the archive of Kunsil in, in whatever uh, archives we could, we could find. And, and there are, you know, uh, the, the story in itself is incredible. What I would um, uh, recommend to, to you, suggest you go to our website and there is a video there. Uh, and you can look at it. But let me just highlight a few of them, uh, what, what UNDP and Bhutan did together. Um, uh, first of all, um, I don't think many of, of us knew that UNDP supported the establishment of the Drukyer uh, with, the, with the, 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 the first uh, or the second or one of the two planes uh, that was uh, purchased by UNDP to enable the Drukyer to be or Bhutan connect to the, to the world. Um, Kunsan as, a, as a, you know, a newspaper, so that was... Uh, Dashu Kinley was, was telling me it was $92,000 grant that, uh, that UNDP gave. Uh, and actually, he, he, um, he shared um, a little bit of a story of that, that once they got the, the computer and the, the, the printing machine, uh, so Dashu Kinley went uh, to present to the cabinet, right? And saying that now Council will be a weekly uh, newspaper. Um, and he says, to, uh, and every Saturday it will come out. He says, two ministers uh, said, please, not Saturday, because that's, that's not a working day for us. Uh, we, we, we have a ring. Please release it on Monday. <laughs> because they thought it was some, something of yours. They must have to, to read it. Um, so the, 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 the Bhutan uh, Fund uh, for, for Conservation was the, the first uh, fund that was established, the first fund in the world, actually, uh, that, that was established. And I can go, uh, you know, on and on on, on, on these stories. Though. So there's a few that which was the first that that uh, that you, you know UNDP and Bhutan partnership actually um, uh, initiated. And and these are the, the stories that still continue. The telecommunication work plan uh, that that was for the first time developed in 1991. Uh, so the 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 um, I don't want to call it the, the fingerprint or footprint, but uh, whatever print you call it, uh, of the Bhutan uh, and UNDP partnership development story, it is all over from, you know, vaccines uh, in, in the 80s when, when UNDP supported the establishment of the first vaccines for, for livestock. Uh, and who knew? Uh, so many years later, we will be talking about a uh, digital system uh, for um, COVID vaccine uh, that, that, you know, that we, 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 we and, and Bhutan together work on that. Um, so, I mean, there are uh, a number of incredible uh, stories. We call them uh, the firsts, right? Uh, quite a few of firsts um, that, that uh, we are very proud of that and we are very, um, 
honored and humbled to have been part of, and, and that credit goes to, to, to Bhutan, to the leadership of Bhutan, to the vision of His Majesties, uh, and um, allowing us to, to, be, to be here part of Bhutan's uh, story, part of Bhutan development story. Uh, so in my huge uh, thanks to Bhutan for opening your doors, uh, for allowing us to, uh, to, uh, uh, to, to come here, to be with you, to be part of your development story, uh, and to learn from you. Uh, there's a lot that, that, that uh, we learn from Bhutan. There's a lot that the world learn, uh, you know, uh, learned from Bhutan, and Bhutan will continue to inspire us and inspire the world. Um, it is largely due to the UNDP that uh, Bhutan has made so much progress, but how about uh, Bhutan's role in the inter international arena? Like, how about uh, Bhutan's contribution towards the partnership? Yeah. Well, I, as I briefly touched on that, I think the world, um, Bhutan will never cease to inspire the world. Um, if you look at the contribution of Bhutan, um, small country, uh, big ideas, uh, um, big inspiration for the rest of the world. Let me touch upon two or three. Um, the whole concept of the uh, gross national happiness uh, to, um, to complement the human development. Uh, this concept, you can go anywhere from West Europe to East Europe, Latin America, you know, East Africa, West Africa, you mentioned Bhutan, uh, the first thing people will tell you, yes, the, the, the happiness country or the happy country. Uh, in that concept of the gross uh, national happiness um, is a huge contribution to, to, uh, to the world. In, in our um, 50th uh, anniversary reception, I think um, someone mentioned, uh, or that was before that, that my predecessor Renata, who was the UNDPRR here, once he, he she asked, uh, his Majesty, and says, can you tell me what is this gross national happiness? And His Majesty responded, it is the, uh, the ultimate uh, stage of human development. Uh, that is so powerful and that is so true. Um, so thanks to Bhutan, uh, you know, it's not the, just the GDP, how you, how you measure progress. Um, the whole uh, story of how you conserve the traditions, the culture, uh, that it goes to, you know, um, uh, centuries and centuries and millennia, right? I think that is something that is inspiring the world. Your conservation, protection of the environment. Um, you know, I visited communities where uh, in some part of the world, unfortunately, uh, humans encroach into forests uh, because they have to, you know, um, cut trees, uh, grow uh, uh, crops and all of that. But in Bhutan, actually, the forest encroach into the farmers, and, and they never cut. <laughs> uh, the, with the climate change, the, 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 the forest, you know, uh, in some areas, uh, actually, you know, expand and take the, the, the land. Uh, and and, and, and that, is, that is something that, that uh, you know, um, inspire uh, the, the world. Your biodiversity, um, you know, how people... Uh, uh, deal with this, uh, you know, human wildlife con uh, conflict. You know, you don't go with your guns shooting, uh, you know, these animals. You know, why you took my potatoes and I don't know uh, tomatoes and in uh, in carrots and all of that. Uh, no, I mean that is an incredible inspiration. That's an incredible um, uh, story right there. But let me also end on 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 something more. And that is when I landed on November six uh, in Paru. That was the day when. A uh, very auspicious day, uh, His Majesty was at the airport seeing off a batch of uh, Bhutanese um, army uh, personnel who were going to join uh, the UN peacekeeping operations uh, in, in Africa. Um, so, uh, and, and that is Bhutan's contribution you know, to the world. The diplomatic achievement of Bhutan, how to position Bhutan in the world, and how to share the stories, and how to to be part of the, this, this, this uh, you know, multilateral um, system so actively, uh, these are all quite inspiring stories. And, and, and um, I can go on and on, uh, but I see there someone is showing the time, um, you know, uh, so I have to, uh, to behave and, um, and limit what I want to say, because otherwise, you know, you will have, a, you will have to have many hours to be able to share my, you know, my um, stories in UNIP stories and, and, and how proud we are. 
And how about the International Day? I think uh, Bhutan played quite a key role in introducing the International Happiness Day. No, absolutely. This is what I say. It's not only International Day, but the concept, right? Going beyond GDPs. The concept, and as I said, you know, the, the ultimate, um, you know, uh, stage of human development, that's such a powerful concept. It's not looking at, you know, do, who has, you know, how much income and all of that. Yes, that is important, but it's not dropping that. It's building on that. Is that, you know, the, 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 there are other elements that are important in human life uh, that makes... Uh, you know, that, that defines human development. It's not just the income, it's not just the GDP. Uh, youth unemployment uh, continues to remain a challenge for Bhutan. And uh, also in recent times uh, in the news and on different social media platforms, uh, you hear a lot about the exodus of people leaving for, mainly for Australia. And uh, I know that UNDP has been involved working together with the government on youth-related issues. Uh, so I would like you to share some of your thoughts on how best Bhutan could navigate with these challenges. Um, it is absolutely one of the, the, um, uh, the challenges. Uh, uh, so, and for the first time when, when I had the honor of, um, you know, we had an audience with His Majesty, you know, uh, he explained uh, the challenge of, of the youth and how concerning it is. Um, from our side, uh, we are also working with the rest of the UN system um, to see what we could do, where we could scale up our support when it comes to youth. We have taken some steps, uh, and as we move to our new programming cycle, we hope to scale up on the, on the area of, of youth support. So basically, I think um, what is important is uh, you have a vibrant youth, uh, very vibrant youth. The, uh, the moment we create opportunities uh, for the youth, uh, then that is where we can tap on the potential of your vibrant uh, youth here in, in, in Bhutan. So we have done a, f a few, uh, taken a few uh, steps and we hopefully together, not only UNDP, but as a UN system, we try to, to work together on this issue. Uh, for example, the youth entrepreneurship. Uh, so these are some of the, 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 um, uh, the work that we have done. We call it the, you know, the, the Spring Plus program or Spring. So basically the, the concept is very um, simple. And that is uh, for those young people who have ideas, the startups, the, you know, they, they want to do something in entrepreneurship, uh, we, we support that. And there is a, 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 you know, uh, a process for that. We are working also with the private sector uh, because the private sector can uh, um, generate uh, growth in jobs. Uh, we are also uh, developing certain um, uh, tools where the, the young innovators can put their ideas, and we, we call it the, in, uh, the digital innovation platform. Um, so there are a few small steps that, that, that we have taken, uh, but this is an area where uh, we have to do a lot more. And from the government side, uh, when I had my uh, meeting with uh, the Honorable Prime Minister, uh, we spent quite a bit of time on the issue of the, of the youth. Um, so from our side, whatever policy support we can provide to the government, experience that we bring from the other, other parts of the world here, creating uh, an employment, employment opportunities, creating an environment where the youth, the, the, the startups, the entrepreneur, uh, you know, ship opportunities are, 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 are grabbed. We are working, working on that. Uh, but I, I must, um, uh, you know, admit that. Uh, this is one of the areas where um, I, uh, I, you know, I am worried uh, as, as much as the rest of you and, and, and His Majesty. Is, uh, so, but I do hope that with opening new, new avenues, how we engage the, the youth, how we listen to youth, how we incorporate youth views in, in, in our planning and policies, we will be able to open new opportunities. And, um, and, I, and, and I have full um, trust in what His Majesty said. Uh, and he said that, uh, you know, hopefully not too, too far from now, there will be opportunities in Bhutan with His Majesty's vision that a lot of these youth uh, that went there and in, in, um, studied abroad will come back because there will be plenty of opportunities in, in Bhutan and Bhutan will actually benefit from the new skills in, uh, in, in um, the, the, the 
uh, you know, the training uh, that they, they, will, they will gain and they will come back here and they will be the engine of growth and prosperity in Bhutan. And I have no doubt about that. Actually, if I, uh, quickly, if I, I would like to add, uh, the recent uh, flash flood in Ungar was very tragic, yeah. and I just wanted to get your views on, uh, you know, uh, nat natural calamities and crisis management, since you have a lot of ex relevant experience. Um, Bhutan um, has protected its environment. Bhutan is a carbon sink. Um, it... Um, it absorbs more than two times of what it emits. But unfortunately, it's still uh, vulnerable. It's vulnerable to um, climate change because climate change is a global phenomenon. You can't control it within borders, right? Um, and, and that comes with the, uh, the, the uh, you know, exposure to disasters uh, as well. And this is a very tragic reminder of how many innocent lives were, were, were lost in that flash floods. Um, this is one of the areas that for our new programming cycle, which will um, kick in in 20, uh, January 2024, that we are looking at ways and means where the disaster risk reduction uh, support can be, um, uh, can be um, scaled up and expanded. We are working with the, the um, rest of the UN, and we are also bringing some experts from our regional um, you know, uh, technical hubs here. Uh, to help us develop uh, a new program on disaster risk uh, um, uh, reduction. Um, it, it is indeed, um, you know, something that uh, we have to work together. Uh, it's about how we build the resilient, right? Some of these we cannot prevent it, unfortunately, uh, but we can build resilience so that the impact is, is limited. Uh, so these types of, of huge losses, um, you know, um, uh, uh, don't happen. Um, so, uh, as also articulated in the 13th uh, five-year plan, disaster is one of the challenges, and we are looking at ways and means to scale up our support for the disaster risk reduction. I mean, uh, I, you know, I was told in our brief, for example, it got forbidden. Um, we share the same culture. Let's not talk about things, uh, bad things, because it may happen. Uh, but if there is, you know, a severe earthquake, this hospital in in um, in uh, in Timpu. Uh, if the electricity is cut, it will not be able to produce an X-ray, uh, let alone the other. So these are some of the, 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 the areas where we are focusing on how we could build resi uh, resilient uh, and how we can make some of these institutions resilient so it's, it's, it's functioning. Uh, we are also working uh, on some of the uh, areas, for example, that uh, training uh, of the, the personnel, how the airport will be able to handle uh, in case God God forbid something big disaster happens. So that 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 training and, and some capacity building there is actually planned for this year. Uh, we're working um, with our uh, you know expert in in, in Geneva uh, who are based uh, in Geneva for these things. Working also with the World Food Program uh, as well, uh, just to to uh, so these are some of the steps that we are taking. Uh, but um, uh, I, I do hope that we will have more to share next year. Uh, I know that 50 years does not mark the end of the partnership, so going forward, uh, what are the future prospects of the Bhutan-UNDP partnership, and um, how do you see, uh, like, as Bhutan prepares to graduate from the least development, uh, developed countries' status, so what are some of the things that you're yeah. looking at? Yeah. Um, you know, our partnership started 50 years ago, it has grown, and I have no doubt it will, it will grow. Uh, LDC graduation is a, a proud moment uh, for, for, for Bhutan and for us, um, so that is a proud moment for all of us to, to celebrate. Uh, but our support will continue. Um, our support will be driven by the need of Bhutan um, and the new vision of, uh, of Bhutan, uh, which is the 13 five-year plan, will, will articulate that. Um, we will try to um, expand uh, some of our support. For example, I mentioned in the area of youth. I, I hope that we will be able to, um, to do more. Uh, the private sector development uh, in terms of creating jobs, uh, creating growth, uh, uh, balanced uh, growth, inclusive growth. Uh, so that will be another area where we, we will uh, hopefully uh, do more. Uh, access to various uh, funding uh, uh, you know, whether that's 
um, you know, related to uh, climate change, mitigation or adaptation. So those will be um, uh, some of the areas that we will continue to support Bhutan to access, uh, access the, the, um, uh, the uh, funding. Um, so, but <clears throat> if I may quote um, something from the administrator, I know the time is, is short. And that will tell you, <clears throat> that will tell you what is the essence of our, our partnership. So this partnership with UNDP and Bhutan is, is, is mutual, it's based on trust, based on mutual respect, because we shine when Bhutan shines, right? So uh, let me just, if, if you allow me, Ugan, I will just uh, read a quick quote from the administrator. Uh, this goes to 1979, uh, when the administrator came here and he, um, in, uh, they opened the, uh, uh, the uh, office, the inauguration of the office. So this is Administrator Bradford Morse, Administrator of UNDP, who told His Majesty, Your Majesty, UNDP is here solely, exclusively, to help you and your people maintain the delicate balance which must exist between the old and the new, between preserving sound traditions and vibrant national culture and adapting new ideas from other parts of the world as may be appropriate to your needs. I know I speak for all of us in the United Nations family this day in rededicating ourselves to that goal. And I personally pledge to you, Your Majesty, my full support in your valued efforts to advance the goals which Bhutan has set for itself. I think this... <laughs> this presents the essence of, of UNDP partnership it doesn't say it will go down after LDC graduation. It doesn't say it will, is a time bound to 50 years. It will continue. And I do hope that, that uh, and I'm um, honored and humbled to be the 13th UNDP um, uh, RISRIP that comes after, you know, the 50 years and with a new chapter. So we look forward to our continued partnership. The people of Bhutan, the government of Bhutan can, uh, can count on our support. Uh, and we will be here with you. Um, guided by His Majesty's vision for this country and the people of Bhutan. Thank you. Uh, sh can I take uh, just one question? Can I? I'm so sorry because it's really difficult to cover 50 years in this very short s session. So maybe I could, uh, if anyone has a question. Any questions? I think they are sensitive. Okay, oh, oh there's one, somebody there. Can, can we have, I think, just one question and we'll wrap up the session. Well, this, I have Karma Tenzin. <clears throat> I've just got two questions and uh, they need not be very long answers but the short ones. I feel that the UN has been here for a very long time and we have felt, we have seen a lot of uh, changes. But some areas, somehow or the other, because I grew up with uh, all this, um, you know, the beginning of the, the development age in Bhutan. So from that angle, I see that some of the areas, no agencies have ever reached some of the remotest places where the help and um, assistance is very dire and uh, that could play a more important role than the role that you have been playing in this um, uh, building towns and cities and uh, the highways. So this is one. If the UN system not only the UN, uh, UNDP, but if the UN system itself could bring in some major changes in this, the system and it's working. Because uh, the, the, the workings are um, endless and I mean, too many, uh, you know, labyrinth in there, one can get lost. That, that is one. Touch the remotest areas where somehow or the other we feel that I feel that those are sort of neglected somehow. Another, uh, another question is, 
that how much can UNDP now, not the UN system, but the UNDP, how much can the UNDP in Bhutan, since you are headquartered in the capital here, could play a role in our highways and expressways. There's a, somehow or the other causing inconvenience and uh, uh, dangers to our uh, citizens. If that could be helped and somehow or the other sorted out, I'd be very happy. Thank you. Well, um, I didn't catch his name. Karma, Mr. Karma. Uh, thank you, Karma, for, for, for that question. Um, your question had two aspects. One, that we work in, in towns, but some of the remote areas, what about that? And the second part was, you know, the highways and infrastructure, right? Um, so if I just, in a, in a nutshell, so our program, UNDP program I'm talking about, is roughly about a billion dollar, uh, sorry, a billion uh, noldrum a year. V vast, the highest per percentage of that actually goes to um, rural areas, whether that's agriculture, whether it's the livelihoods and all of that, from Lunana to, you know, all the way you can, you can name it. Uh, yes, we can't be in every single location, but the bulk of our assistance is actually focused on the livelihoods of the rural areas. <clears throat> You know, a small percentage goes to the policy work in the, in the urban, uh, urban areas. Having said that, I do agree with you that uh, we, we, we should uh, focus more on the livelihood of the um, areas which are uh, remote in they don't have access to services, and we will continue through our support to, uh, you know, with the government to, 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 to support that. Um, you, for example, this year we... Um, when I came and I was told the, the, the highland communities, uh, you know, their livelihood, uh, you know, they rely on yak and, and others, so that is, so we started a small pilot pr uh, program there, how we could support those highland communities in remote areas to sustain and maintain their livelihood. Uh, and hopefully the pilot will tell us how we could do more, uh, and that is one of the, the, the focus areas that we do. So I do... I do agree with you that we have to do more, and we will uh, we will uh, continue to to support and and expand where we can <clears throat> on the highways and the big infrastructure. I think those are some of the areas we do not have um, uh, neither the resources uh, nor uh, uh, you know uh, comparative advantages. I think those are areas where uh, needs investment. Uh, probably the World Bank and other. Um, entities that provide loans uh, to uh, to the government, uh, so they, they they might be able to um, to tackle those. Uh, for us, we are in the uh, you know um, supporting the livelihood, uh, eradicating the poverty, but we bring grants. We don't we don't have loans, and those are big projects that will require a lot of resources. Um, so uh, if we could play any role in terms of policy support in some in some areas. Uh, yes, we do work, for example, we are looking at the urban resilience as we will be rolling out one large scale um, project looking at the um, uh, Timpu in Paro as two examples. When we come beyond that infrastructure, I, I think those are best suited for the IFIs and, 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 and some other you know, uh, uh, bilaterals uh, for that. I hope that, that answers your question. Uh, can I take one more question? So uh, before we end, uh, I would just like to ask uh, you to try and reflect back. Uh, so much has happened in a very short span of time. And uh, I, I would request you to think, I'm sure a lot of you haven't thought, but when I was growing up as a child, uh, Thimpu was just only a handful of shops by the clock tower. And there was hardly any uh, shopping like today. And uh, today we have everything right at your fingertips with your smartphones and your laptops and everything. So with that, I'd uh, like to request everyone to give a huge round of applause to not only Mr. Yunus for his time here today, but also for UNDP's contribution to Bhutan. Thank you. Thank you.